so everybody hey welcome to another episode of two guys on beers coming to you from national mechanics in old city philadelphia i'm johnny Bellata. this is dave Monterana. and today last week we did what we did uh scotland for two beers last episode last episode we did scotland for two beers. sorry last week i'm i'm yeah uh and today we're doing two english uh over Bruce. in the UK. Yeah. And I'm sorry, we're, it, it's funny to film while we're watching Joe stuff his face. Yeah, he's just eating a quesadilla behind the camera right now. If you can hear like the, the, the subtle no, no, sounds no, of him no. chewing. That's just Joe enjoying a quesadilla, but which is not a fajita. This is a Joe episode because Joe is extremely disappointed by what happened the last time we reviewed a beer by Samuel Smith. Samuel Smith is his favorite brewery, and it's one of mine too, and I think it's probably it's one of John's. So this might be Sam Smith's comeback episode. Or Joe, and so yeah. that's why we're doing another Sam Smith so style, soon right? after we did. We're doing their Imperial stuff, right? So let's start with the Witchcraft. The Witchcraft witch, witch, is it? Witchcraft. Witch, witchcraft. It is. Witchcraft, which is from a, Witchwood Brewery, a blonde or an English pale ale from the Witchcraft Brewery, which is in Oxfordshire, England, in the town of Whitney, which is right next to the Witch. Sorry, yeah, it is. It's the Witchwood Forest. Um, so. The story that the brewery goes, the brewery's changed hands a lot, um, and it is it is now called the Witch, it, like the 1990s it actually became the Witchwood Brewery, but it dates back to the, seven, the 1800s and the 1700s. Um, this is in the cask 3.8%, 3. in the bottle it's 4.5%, so if you get this in the bottle it's 4.5% alcohol by volume. And this is an English Pale Ale, we talked a little bit about them, English Pale Ales um, get their name due to... Um, the hard water in certain parts of England where the English pale ale style originated, uh, which tends to bring out a bitterness um, and keep it very, like, uh, crisp. Um, and so that's my quick little spiel. On <laughs> they, they, they call this a blonde. It could also be considered a blonde ale. Yeah, it is, it is called a blonde ale. And uh, because it is more of an English pale ale, uh, you're going to get uh, a nice floral hoppy flavor. And this is, this is boasted to be infused three times with hops. Um, and it's not so much for the bitterness, but it's more for the the, the nose that you're going to get off of this beer. Uh, there is going to be a slight. What do bit they call of, it? Uh, there's a saying. Thrice hopped and golden. Yeah. That's that's what they that's their quote for this beer. So I mean, we're going to get we there is there is bittering hops in this too though, but they they claim that it's a sweet beer with a little bit of biscuit uh, type flavor and then uh, finishes bitter. So nice and unfiltered. It is nice, nice blonde color. Um, it's holding a decent head, you know. I mean, we've been talking for a couple seconds. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a very thin head, but it's, it's even lacing. It's, it lacing is, is not much on the glass, so yeah. it tells me that the beer is very, you know, it, it's it's not, you know, it's more sedimentary than it is, you know. It's just not. Mm -hmm. and, and you can get that in the nose a little bit. It's a little bit yeasty, and it's a little bit, it, it is a little bit biscuity. Yeah. It's got that little, it's got that biscuit quality to it. By the way, uh, Witchwood Brewery. Most of you will probably know their Hobgoblin brew, and they have 40-some Hobgoblin pubs in England. So, uh, the same makers of Hobgoblin, that's who. Yeah, made which one is. Uh, so, I'm done smelling this thing. Yeah. I want to taste it. Super smooth. Very smooth. Um, no bitters at all. It's more sour at the end than it is bitter. It's it's sour and a little drying. It is a little bit. Um, I have to I have to admit that the flavor is not really exciting me. It, it kind of I want it to be a little bit more bold and it's just not. Yeah. And um, it's very light. And yeah. I mean, unfortunately, I guess my bar for a blonde is like Left's blonde. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. This absolutely. Just isn't, I mean, this just is. It isn't a comparison at all. This is kind of. It, it does have that biscuity quality and that it bready does. quality, but it's not a compliment to the beer. It's a yeah. You can taste that that, that yeasty biscuit type uh, type flavor, yeah. uh, and it starts to settle in your mouth a little bit, and you, you definitely taste it. But um, I think it takes away from the mouthfeel. I don't think I it think adds it takes to away it. from the mouthfeel too. Uh, I'm I'm rating this low. I'm gonna put this in the 70s, uh, like 70. I'm gonna give it a 77. 79. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean it's de it's good. It's not terrible, but I was just hoping for a little bit more out of what they boasted from the beer. Yeah, you know maybe this should be in the '80s, but Johnny and I have certain expectations set up, and I guess when when you tell us it's going to be one thing and it turns out not to be as great as we expect it to be, 
sometimes that can detract. So, yeah, so it, it, it's it's not the worst beer in the world. It's just not like blowing my socks off. Yeah, especially no. from the producers of Hobgoblin. So let's move on to one of our favorites, Samuel Smith's. Their Imperial Stout. Is it gonna be good this time? This is a Russian Imperial Stout. This is weighing in at um, actually a light seven percent uh, alcohol by volume. Um, because Russian Imperials tend to be heavier. This is from the Samuel Smith's Old Brewery in Tadcaster, England. It is the oldest brewery in uh, in that area. Um, they still use all of their original copper and wood casks and their um, stone block casks, which is something we talked about last time we did Sam Smith's. It's a really interesting feature of Sam Smith's. Um, but this is the Russian Imperial Stout, and I am really hoping that Sam Smith's goes ahead and... Uh, Redeems itself. I hope it does, too. Um, and I know Joe is, too. Yeah, Joe is looking at this and licking his lips from behind the camera. He really wants a piece of this. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful head. Oh, uh, yeah. It's nice, just, dark you color. Mine, I poured mine a little bad, but it's, yeah. it's it's huge. You can't see it, but it's I mean, it's got like a nice ruby undertone to the color. It's a, It's got a nice caramel flavor, it's uh, a, caramel scent to it. Yeah, but it's not as coffee and as chocolatey as you no. as, as you get off a Russian Imperial, that, or that you consider a Russian Imperial. I have, but I love, I'm loving the scent it on this is, beer. It is. It's like just a little bit of sweet, and it's just a little bit of caramel. Just and enough it, to, to wet your taste buds, to, but not, yeah, to not make, want make to taste you, it. like, yeah. So let's, let's taste it. And now we've got some scores. Now we've got... Oh, totally redeemed. That is fantastic. Way Russian more Imperial. bitter than I expected it to Way be. Way more bitter than I expected it to be, yes, but not drying. It doesn't, no. That bitterness doesn't dry you out. And, it, it, and you kind of like, you can suck on the bitter after the beer is done. And, and that, that, that's what brings out yeah. a little bit of coffee and a little bit of chocolate. A bitter, bitter chocolate. It's kind of like the after flavor of it. But it's so subtle, and it almost tastes... Let me, let me put it this way. This almost tastes burnt. Yeah. And I mean, I mean, I don't mean the bad burnt, like charred all the way through. I mean, just that light little char you get on a barbecue piece of chicken or, or pork that complements the flavor does the same thing here. It, it really gives it, it, is. it it's some like a, a fantastic flavor. It, it is. I, I mean, I, I think that's a perfect way to explain it. It's, it's, it's like a little bit of barbecue... In a stout, and this is a really unique flavor for Russian Imperial because Russian Imperial stouts very often tend to lean towards a heavy chocolate and a heavy coffee. And I know that we appreciate that and we yep. talk about it, and you know, like that's something that we yeah. usually give high scores. But in this case, it's none of those things, and yet it's still a really good stout. Absolutely. Uh, hi, hi, Marks. I'm rating this one. I'm doing it. 98. 98? Giving it a 98. Are you insane? I'm giving it a 92. I'm going 98. I feel like it's a little sour in the finish, um, and, and it almost like the bitter switches to a sour, um, but I'm still giving it an A. A minus, I guess, for me, and an A plus from Johnny. It's an A plus from me. Um, this is a really, really good beer, and this is this brings back our faith in Sam Smith's. Once again, two very good beers uh, uh, today, both from the from uh, English the English Isle. Um, well, they weren't. They, I mean, the witchcraft. We were kind of disappointed in. We were a little disappointed in witchcraft. I mean, but it wasn't. It wasn't like totally blah. I mean, we didn't. Eh, maybe yeah, a we little, gave a little it bit. C's. We gave it C's. We gave it we C's. We gave it right. C's. Right, but but I Samuel Smith so, is like yeah. I guess I'm so excited because the Samuel Smith was just so good. Yeah. So good. Yeah. So um, once again, for two guys on beer, we'd like to thank the National Mechanics uh, and the Foodery, and mm. also let you know about the March Madness of Beer, which is coming up. Uh, please submit to us uh, your beer choices, those you think should be in a tournament, and uh, we'll tally those and we'll, we'll put yep. them in. So um, Much love for Joe, for Alex, for two guys on beer. I'm Dave Martirano. I'm Johnny Bellotta. And uh, go, enjoy go enjoy some, some Sam Smith. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs>